I own a bunch of pairs of denim, but I don't understand like why uh, raw denim became like what would the value prop was for that material. To your question about value proposition on raw denim, right? I think that is something that a lot of people like to hang on to when they first start spending more money on jeans. Um, either that's something you tell yourself or that's somebody that someone in a store will tell you is that they last longer. Uh, therefore, it's okay to spend more money on them. And over time, what you realize is that it's not a straight value proposition. Uh, and the reason for that is that cotton garments still break down. Even even jeans that are made out of really, really beautiful fabrics uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that it will last longer for you. In fact, if you are wearing them every day and putting them through a lot of work, which is what a lot of people love to do with the raw denim, you could be shortening the lifespan of them. Mm -hmm. And if you decide to not wash them often, you're definitely shortening the lifespan of them. Um, so there's like a, there's like a, I don't know, kind of like a scale here, right? If you, if you want them to look crazy and people have told you not to wash them very often, uh, and they do look really crazy after a while, lose them longevity, you know, they're going to rip and tear. Um, if you treat them specifically for utility and you're washing them all the time, maybe you're not going to get super contrasty aging, but they will last longer. Interesting. And okay. If you and if you bought five pairs of cheap Levi's, they will last longer than one pair of nice jeans, bar none. Right? If you just wore them back to back to back to back to back. So there has to be some other reason why people spend money on raw denim. I think that people spend money on it because um, they care about how it's produced. Um, and or they care about how the fabric wears in and how it changes over time is more important than than the strict longevity and durability of it. Mm -hmm. um, and they care about supporting brands that pay a lot of attention to how they make their stuff. So if you put all that together um, and you can tack on to that, the fact that the this is one garment that you can wear all the time and you don't have to really think too much about it if you really love how they fit you and how they mold it to you then I would say that there's a greater uh, value proposition that consists of a lot of different things, but it's not just buy raw down because it lasts longer because mm -hmm. it kind of doesn't. So I asked a question to Andrew, Johan, and he told me that I had to wait for you. <laughs> so he gave us a little bit of a history of uh, you guys, how you guys met and you being at USC and then the t-shirt uh, journey. And the question that I asked was, so when you made the decision to start building a collection, why did you start with jeans? Um, well, we didn't, we didn't start with, why did we start making jeans in general? We didn't start with jeans. I think it, we had started designing collection and at that point we were making a full collection and we were making everything from head to toe. We had headwear, we had, we had ties that were cut and and blocked and and sewn in new york we had um we were doing footwear at the time uh made in maine it felt like we were building um a nice full collection where we had really quality garments to offer and denim was just one thing that we hadn't attacked yet but it was it also felt like something that we couldn't just introduce into the collection with without a lot of thought put into it. It took a little bit more time to develop, um, to sample out and to figure out where we were going to try and fit in in the market. Um, we didn't feel like it was just, you know, another button down shirt or another seasonal jacket that we could add to the collection. It would appear in that season and then sort of be gone. We wanted it to have some longevity in the collection and become more of an ongoing program within the collection. I think initially our idea was to try to make something that was high quality, that was raw, very simply branded or not very heavily branded, that could compete at uh, the price points of some of the more entry level uh, raw denim options that were really popular at the time. And then to maybe um, be a little bit higher quality than some of those brands um, and to, to offer a sort of uh, jumping off point for people that are trying to get into ultimately the higher end Japanese denim. Interesting. Yeah. I For some reason, I thought you went from t-shirts 
to jeans. I had that wrong. Um, we went, yeah, we, we went, we started off. I always say we started off with t-shirts because that's what you do when you have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> you know, anybody can get a t-shirt printed. Um, ironically, it's probably the hardest thing to start with too, right? It's like every most options. T-shirts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in a sense, it's very competitive. So in that sense, yes, it's the, it can be the most difficult, but in terms of purely getting it made, I mean, you know, a school club can get t-shirts made your, you know, local mom and pop business that wants to sell some t-shirts can get it made. So that's where we started because it didn't take a lot of technical knowledge about how to produce garments that took more of an eye for things, an idea of what um, sort of message that we wanted to portray, how we wanted things to look visually. But there isn't, there wasn't a lot of um, technical garment manufacturing knowledge needed early on. That's something I wanted to ask you about. You're talking about technical. Uh, from my reading, it's it's my understanding that your denim is a little bit different than other people's. Maybe you could describe. Uh, I forget. Is it a hundred? It's one hundred and like an X after it. One hundred X. Yeah. Yeah. So and I have the one hundred X K, which is like the overdyed version. I think you have a few different versions of materials, but maybe you could break down the different denim that you have and explain you know what makes it different. One hundred X denim is the is the first denim that we ever started making. It's the denim that we launched with, and we still make it to this day. I got a pair right um, here. <laughs> I, nice. I love these things. Yeah. So that's a it's a fourteen and a half ounce um, indigo warp white weft denim so classic blue jean looking um indigo it starts off very deep blue it's different only in that all denims are different every single denim is different um and what makes denim different is all of these components that come together to make the fabric so you have your warp thread you have your weft thread those are two threads your warp is the top thread the weft is the the bottom thread or the thread underneath they're woven together um, in varying patterns. Some, you know, the most classic is a three by one. So it's a twill, but it can be woven in um, in a five by two or a one by one, or it, it could be a, in a lot of different arrangements, the way that the top thread and the bottom thread interact. The number of dyes, dips that top thread goes through can change the denim. The thickness, the gauge of the denim, of the yarn rather, that uh, is is used to weave the denim. Refineness or coarseness or the variation in the yarn uh, has a big effect on the denim. So um, I think the, the biggest thing for us at that time in 2007, 2008 was that as a very small American brand, we were able to work with the Japanese mill and and custom design a fabric to our specifications and have it woven to our specifications. And um, it wasn't just a fabric that we found that was left over from a bigger brand or that the mill was making constantly and offering to a bunch of different brands. So for us as a very small brand, that was really what we were able to hang our hat on and what um, set us apart at a very early stage in the game what was that like the walking mi- into the mill and and getting the because i have to think that not many people have come in on that scale wanting something that, that specific or am i wrong um it's just it, it's a numbers game and it's an improbability for brands our size because um usually the minimums are around ten thousand yards a mill can really tell you whatever they want if they want your business but um Usually uh, at that time, it was around 10,000 yards. 10,000 yards is about 3,000 pairs of jeans in one color. Mm-hmm. So you can make it across a couple of different cuts. You can make it in a jacket and, and you know three cuts or something like that. But it's still a lot of units. And for a brand our size, um, and most brands our size, there's just no way that you could commit to that much fabric. And not only that, but like, can't really just offer one color of denim if you're trying to like build something you know so uh i think we did two or three to start off with 
maybe two. And um, they allowed us to take a portion of it at a time and they sat on the rest. Wow. Um, so that we didn't have to take it all at once. Yeah, we wanted something that broke in very nicely. It was very rigid that broke in nicely, but it wasn't painful or super uncomfortable to wear. And so a really strong selling point or something that a lot of customers early on really gravitated towards is that the underside of the denim almost feels brushed. It's very soft. So for people who are a little bit intimidated by the entire world of raw denim or the idea of breaking in a pair of jeans, um, it was surprisingly comfortable right at the onset um, with the fabric being quite a bit um, softer on the inside, but still over time breaking in very nicely. 